Now we know that communication is a key part of change management and in the Pros I add car model we know that communication hits all elements of ADCAR, particularly awareness and reinforcement. We also know that while communications experts and change management experts will craft the messages based on discovery, what's in it for me, and what will help people through their ADCAR process, that the people that we're going to invite to send those communications are sponsors, managers and champions. That's part of their role. But communication can be tough. There's a great quote from George Bernard Shaw. He said, the biggest illusion regarding communications is that it has taken place. And I would add in Cotter's quote, if you can't convince someone in a way that engages them and they understand, about the change in five minutes or less, then your job is not yet done. Key difference between a communications plan from a traditional project and a change management related communications plan is that change management, we will identify the audience first and then craft the message for those audiences. And that might seem obvious, but it's not often done in regular project plans. And the reason is, it goes back to precise five tenets of change management, is that we change individual by individual and group by group. So we've got to figure out what's going to resonate with individuals and groups and then customise their communication according to those groups. So it's about getting the right message from the right person about the right thing to the right people. So I like to take it a stage further. If you look at the Change Leaders Roadmap by Ackerman Anderson, you'll find a five-step process to break communication down and to make it even more specific. And it's a great way to consider communication. Let's look at that in a minute. Yeah, so I love the Ackerman Anderson 5x4 matrix. It shows five levels of communication, all of which are required for communication to be as effective as possible. So on page one, of their book and I always use this to make sure my communications approach has got sufficient depth in it and it basically begins where most comms plans end most comms plans share information but there's a lot more depth required for effective communication and ultimately it's about communications being a process not an event not an isolated event or set of events but a process that is continual throughout and beyond the change and it's predicated on the fact that your comms plan should be integrated into your engagement strategy because they're both intertwined at a deep level. And we see that in some organisations as well where they actually create an internal comms and engagement department which recognises that both are required for change. And each of the levels described in this model describe their own outcome. And the culmination of each element describes excellent communication, ultimately. And each level requires a different style and a different medium to achieve its outcome. Let's look at them. Number one, information sharing. Number two, building understanding. Number three, identifying implications. Number four, gaining commitment. And number five, altering behaviour. So that's down the left-hand side of the matrix. And for each one of those, there are three elements. Style, number one. Number two, media and vehicles for that communication. And number three, the reaction to look out for when achieved. So let's look at each one. The first one, information sharing. Now Ackerman, Ackerman Anderson recommend that the style of this should be telling one way. I don't necessarily agree with that 100% because a communication plan for change management should be a listening plan, but certainly informing people as to what's happening and drives the awareness element of ADCAR. Under the media and vehicles, they suggest things like lectures, meetings, presentations, videos, etc. And then under the reaction when achieved column, they have, thank you for telling me this, that's what it should be looking out for. And that's actually, as I said, about ADCAR's awareness. The next one is building understanding. And the style here, they say, is two-way, two-way communications. So a telling and a listening plan and answering generated questions. And they suggest that's best achieved in small group meetings. I guess these days it would be virtual, mostly. Breakouts, Q&As, blog. And the reaction to look out for that is having, un having explored this and understood my objections or concern, I understand the focus of the change and why it's needed. And again, for me, that relates directly to precise awareness in the ADCAR model. 
The third element is identifying implications, and that's about introspection, discussions with co-workers, what it means to me, what's in it for me, what's it to me, and that's a multi-directional communications approach. And here that's about contiguous groups, teams discussing the implications together and specifically how it affects their job. It's also about immediate supervisors, the role of a manager. They're closest to the people and they're best placed to participate and contribute to those discussions. What we should look out for, a reaction that says, I get it, I understand what it means for me, my team. The fourth level is gaining commitment and that's about sorting out feelings, about the change and that may require time and this is where talk time with trusted colleagues comes in with champions with immediate supervisor and even access to the sponsor to discuss and Ackerman Anderson suggests that this is the part of communication where people will give a personal commitment and personally commit to making that change work and crucially individuals will see that their immediate supervisor and even the sponsor the leader of the organization even want this change to happen and they'll see their place within it. And for me again, that not only touches on awareness in the ADCAR model, but desire. And the final element is altering behaviour. And that's about demonstrating the new behaviour. This is how it helps me in my job. I can do this every day. That's about training, about coaching and crucially the role of champions to make that work. And again, it touches on awareness and desire, but the, the heavy emphasis in ADCAR here is on knowledge and ability. The idea of how do I learn about the change, how to do it in my job, and how do I apply it in my day-to-day -day -day function. And so I guess Ackerman Anderson is suggesting, and this is how I use it, that developing a comm strategy is also about an developing an engagement strategy and they're suggesting there's five levels too. Now ADCAR underpins all of this. We've got to drive people through their ADCAR process and as I said before communication it drives every element of ADCAR but with particular emphasis on awareness and reinforcement. This breakdown of communication from Ackerman Anderson allows us to go into a little bit more depth, lets us stratify our communication strategy and lets us explicitly map different elements of it to the ADCAR process which remains the foundation for everything. Ultimately we see, and I've been guilty of this in the past myself, where unless you communicate effectively people don't know what's going on, they don't know, they're not aware of why the change should happen, what happens if it doesn't, they don't know what's in it for them, that's desire, they don't know where to gain the knowledge or the ability to make that change happen and the change may not be reinforced. So although as a leadership team perhaps we've spent a lot of time figuring out all of that, we've got to let people know and that's the function of communication. So don't fall into the George Bernard Shaw trap. The biggest mistake with communication is imagining it's happened. Make it happen. I hope that helped. And uh, now the little bit of sleet or snow has started and it was sunny about an hour ago. Hmm. Okay, better get going.